Hi, I'm Anutama, and in this video I'm going to give you some useful and I hope really interesting information about palmistry and how palmistry and astrology interrelate. Uh, palmistry is a really wonderful thing. Everybody seems to like it. If you go into a group of people and you mention that you know something like, oh, for instance, wow, this, this big mound there, that means you have a really strong Venus influence in your life. All of a sudden you'll have hundreds of hands thrust in your face and they'll want to know all about themselves. And it's very interesting that people seem to take it very seriously. Another really interesting thing about palmistry is that there isn't much disagreement about it. If you go to a bookstore and get ten different books on palmistry, they all pretty much say the same thing, which is not quite the case with astrology. So it's not quite as controversial. Now, palmistry and astrology are very closely interre interrelated. For instance, the, in Sanskrit, which is considered to be one of the oldest languages and the root of many modern languages, the word for astrology is Jyotish, and the word for palmistry is also Jyotish. So they're very closely related. And in this video, I'll tell you how the relation, how you can actually amplify the planetary energies, or how you already do that through the use of your hands. Uh, I also am going to put forth the idea that astrology is not some kind of woo-woo science, it's actually, it's actually physics. For instance, we have right now all kinds of radio waves and different kinds of waves passing through us that we don't actually have a facility in our body to pick up or amplify, but they, are act they actually do exist. So similarly, the planetary energies do exist and our bodies are able to pick them up and amplify them in different ways and they affect our thoughts, our decisions, and our desires. I'll get more into that later in the video. Uh, you can tell a lot about a person just by looking at their hands. It's interesting because we're the consciousness inside our body, and so the kind of body we have really reflects the consciousness that we have, and particularly so on the hands, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in this video. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the seven areas of the hand. There are, of course, the four fingers, the thumb, or the mound be underneath the thumb, then there's the area right along the middle, and then there's the, the area of the lower part of the palm there. And each one of these seven areas uh, actually represents or can actually amplify a different planetary energy. To help you understand what the energies are a bit better, I do what's called personified astrology. Because if you think of a person that really exemplifies the quality of each energy, then you can really understand what that energy means. So the first area of the palm that I'll talk about is the index finger and the area right underneath the index finger. That's called the Jupiter finger and the mound of Jupiter. Somebody who has naturally receives a lot of the Jovian or jovial energy has a, a very prominent index finger and tends to use it a lot. These kind of people with a lot of Jovian energy tend to be speakers or teachers, philosophers, religious leaders, that kind of person. Jupiter is personified as a very, well you could say a jovial person who is a natural teacher and a natural speaker. This is a picture of what Jupiter's personification could look like. The next area of the palm that I'd like to discuss is the Saturn finger and the mound right underneath Saturn's finger, which is called the mound of Saturn. Most people actually have a little indentation in that area because uh, Saturn's energy isn't something we necessarily want to amplify. We feel the amount of it that we feel and we try to make the best of it. You know what it means when somebody amplifies Saturn's energy by raising their middle finger, right? <laughs> so Saturn is personified as a very tall, thin, dour, gloomy, uh, he's actually characterized as being the servant in the astrological cabinet, and he likes to gossip. So anytime you emphasize Saturn's energy, it's better to really be conscious of the positive aspects of Saturn's energy, which is um, precision, self-discipline, and um, service. The next area of the hand that I'd like to discuss is called the sun finger and the mound of the sun. In some books it will call it the Apollo finger, but basically it's, it's talking about the solar energy. The solar energy affects your physical body more strongly than the other energy. Somebody who feels a lot of solar energy tends to carry his body very erect, his head high, and he doesn't think that he's better than other people, he actually knows it. So it's considered to be a malefic energy, 
it's important to have it to some degree because if you don't think you're important then you don't really accomplish anything but at the same time having too much out of harmony with the rest of your character is not a good thing. Uh, the Sun is personified as the king in the astrological cabinet and he's a, a tall, very good looking, extremely charismatic person that just in charge of everything. Uh, it's interesting to note that all over the world people tend when they get married to put a ring on the sun finger because you want to band that energy. You don't want to have so much solar energy because once you're married it's not all about yourself anymore. The next area of the hand is the mercury finger and the mound of mercury. It's the little finger and the area right beneath the little finger. Now mercury is personified as a small, quick, kind of impish person that knows everything, is always into fun and, and changing things a lot, but extremely focused, although quite superficial. So you notice people that have very strong mercurial influence are, if you watch them speak or, or just go about their life, they tend to carry their little finger apart from the other fingers, so showing a, a certain degree of focus. Then there is the mound of Venus. This is a very important mound that is right underneath the thumb. People who have large, fleshy mounds of Venus means that they feel Venus's energy very strongly. They tend to be people that really enjoy things. They appreciate beauty. They appreciate harmony and balance. Venus is personified. Interestingly, he's personified as a man. But because Venus's energy is all about balance, he's a man with a lot of feminine qualities. He's considered to be submissive, even though he's a very large person. He's just very easygoing, cheerful, happy, and, and loving, and harmonious. It, it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Then there's the mound of Mars. This is the area right across the center of the hand. And it's the area that if you're holding weapons or tools, they come into contact with the mounds of Mars. This is really interesting because people who feel martial, Martian energy very strongly tend to be very attracted to, again, weapons and tools. Mars is personified as the ultimate military commander, and anything that's martial, which is strategy, defining boundaries, setting goals, that kind of thing, not just fighting, is under the influence of marsh, martial energy. And the last area that I'd like to talk about is the mound of the moon. This is the area opposite the thumb, right at the bottom of the palm. This is probably the most protected area of your palm, and it indicates how you feel lunar energy. The moon is personified as a beautiful, uh, serene, sensitive, very intelligent woman, and her energy affects your subconsciousness. Now, you're not usually aware of it, but during a full moon, people tend to be not consciously aware, but subconsciously aware of things that they haven't processed, events in their life that haven't been processed properly. Then the lunar energy will kind of like tweak you a little bit and say, hey, you need to be thinking about that. Not thinking about it, you need to be dealing with it. So those are the seven different areas of the palm. It's interesting if you look at a person's palm and you, you can kind of figure out, well, which area of their uh, their palm is the most prominent. You get an idea of which energies they like. You'll see somebody that has the big mounds there of Mars. You say, oh, the guy's a Martian. If they have the huge and their index finger stands out apart, you go, oh, that's a, a Jovian person. He's naturally a teacher. So it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do when you first meet a person to take a look at their hand, maybe not let them know you're doing it, but it's still kind of fun because it gives you an idea of who they really are. In conclusion, we are actually consciousness that inhabits a body. And the body that nature gives us is really appropriate to where our consciousness is at. And one of the easiest places to analyze that is in the hand. So if you meet a person and you know the basics of palmistry, you can see where which planetary influences are strongest in that person. It gives you an idea of the person's character. It's also a lot of fun. It's easier to understand the planetary energies if you think of the personification of the energies and get to understand them a little bit more. It's just is about as easy as getting to know seven people pretty simply. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will have more in depth. I'm sure people want to know, well, what does that line mean? What if my what if my lifeline is broken? Well, stay tuned for future videos. I'm sure I'll have them real soon.